So blessed to be able to continue in a series. Uh, if you haven't been with us, uh, by the way, my name is Shane Schlesman. If we haven't met, if you're watching online, we'd love to meet you. Uh, in fact, I can see your comments right here online. I love doing that during the service, uh, seeing people from all over. And if you're in the chat, I uh, love that. And I'm so grateful that, to be here and continue in a series that God put on my heart in the life of David. And David was the king of Israel at, at one point, but in this point in the story, King Saul was the first king of Israel. And, and King Saul uh, began to, to step away from God, and he moved his heart away from God. And so God discovers one after his own heart. And so we've been in a series called All Heart. And, and so we've learned already that, that God is not... Uh, um, looking at the outward appearance, but he's looking at the heart. And ultimately, what we desire and what we want in our lives is exactly what King David represents. And, and so I want us to look at a little bit of what to pick up from the story exactly where we left off last week. And that is in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Then the Lord said, through Samuel the prophet, to David and all who were there, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day, on the spirit of the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Have you ever been uh, in a slump, so to speak, in your spiritual walk that you just have felt like? Like, I, I believe everything. I, it isn't that my belief has been, I'm not in a crisis of faith. I'm not in a crisis of what I believe. I believe that Jesus is still my king. I, I still worship him. But I can tell you that I'm in a crisis of power. I've got nothing left. And have you ever been there in your walk? That you're, you're in a crisis of, of really What's empowering me? God, where is the power in my life? I believe in you, and I have you in my life. I have, I've even invited you into my heart. But where is the power of God in my life? Uh, we we uh, want to be a testimony to the world, but a testimony to the world that looks exactly like them when you come into crisis or come into problems that has no power to your life is not much of a testimony, is it? And wouldn't you love it if when you showed up in all of your friends' uh, encounters or all of in your workplace or in your neighborhood, that when you showed up, that the power of God came with you? That something was so different in your walk that you felt empowered. Can you imagine David, who was, remember, out in the field and, 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 uh, and away from his brothers and estranged from his father and his brothers, and, and now we see this scene where David is being anointed. Can you imagine the power of God that came on David coming on you? Well, I, I don't think we have to imagine that. I think we need to learn what it is to be anointed. And so I want us to open up God's word today and answer this question. Am I anointed? Are you anointed? You say, well, I don't know. That sounds like someone who's very special, like uh, someone who's been set apart for God and and uh, I'm not sure if I'd fit that category. My resume doesn't exactly say uh, anointed, okay? I I'm not sure that, that I would be chosen to be the one who would be anointed. I'm not sure if that's me, or I'm not sure if I could look at even my own life and describe it as such to say that anointing would describe it. Well, I want us to go back into this passage um, and, and, and maybe can we get a, a little bit of uh, how many people love to make sure you don't leave any meat on the bones when you eat your chicken or uh, your turkey, okay, Thanksgiving. Okay, you, you, see, you see that you like to scrape that off, make it maybe make a, a soup the next day or some sandwiches or get leftovers. You make sure, I don't want to leave anything behind, amen? 
1 Samuel 16, when they arrived, remember the prophet came. And before we move forward, I want to look at this one more time. He says, surely the Lord is anointed, stands before me with Eliab. And the first son of Jesse goes before and the prophet's looking for the anointing. He's looking for the one the next king of Israel. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at things that people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So if you're sitting here today and going, I'm not sure, remember the story. I'm not sure if it's me. I'm not sure if if I'm right for the job. God's anointing is for all of those who decide to pick up, take up their cross and follow him. See, in the Old Testament, anointing the oil represents the Holy Spirit, the power of God. So we have God the Father represented in the Old Testament. Then in the Gospels, we have God the Son, Jesus, represented in the Gospels. And Jesus shows up in the scene and, and he, he releases anointing and, and releases those to go from his ministry and represent and do the things that Jesus does, but then he leaves and acts and the church age and what we're still living in today, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, then God the Son, then God the Holy Spirit comes on us in Pentecost and and we believe as a Pentecostal church that, that Pentecost is still being lived out in our lives and the Holy Spirit now anoints us as the oil that can come on you. You don't have to wait for the prophet Samuel to come to you. I know I'm preaching in my introduction, but if you allow me for a moment, you don't have to wait. The anointing is here. We don't have to wait or say, wait for a pastor to recognize or wait for someone to call us up and say, hey, everyone, the anointed one is standing here. You can go in your prayer closet. You can come forward. You can uh, pray in your seat right now and know that the Holy Spirit can come on you and anoint you with power. So my question, are you anointed, is not for the special It is for those who would give God their hearts. Remember Samuel who turned his heart away from God. In fact, the very first moment that the prophet of God was brought into God's plan, uh, God alerted the prophet and said, your kingdom will not endure to tell Saul. Your kingdom will not endure the Lord because you've rejected God, because you've walked away from God. Uh, And remember, we looked at the difference between Saul and David. The difference wasn't, well, Saul fell, he he sinned, and David was perfect. The difference was found in his heart. The Lord has sought out, 1 Samuel 13, 14, a man after God's own, what? He appointed him ruler over his people. Now we're talking about calling. See, anointing is the power of God coming on you. What you do with that power as God directs your steps for your calling is what comes next. But wouldn't it be amazing to know whatever what comes next is in your, in your life is filled with the anointing and the power of God? I want us to look at this and ask ourselves, for our own anointing, but first we have to prepare our hearts for anointing. You need to prepare your heart for anointing to be this one after God's own heart. I'm so glad that the the translators saw in the Hebrew there that pursuit of anointing. Uh, Okay, that pursuit. Let's let's take a, a look at the definition of this Hebrew word of heart. The inner man, soul, heart, a man, the knowledge, conscious of moral character, a seat of appetites, a seat of emotions, a seat of passions, and the seat of courage that sits inside of us. All of that is what God calls your heart. So I'm so grateful that 
the translator saw this in this aspect of this word heart, that it could be something that we could be after. That David was a man after God's own heart. The difference between Saul and David is that Saul began to, to uh, bring and seek glory for himself. In fact, we read in the story last week, where, in the very first week of this series, two weeks ago, we read in the story how, how Saul had begun to set up monuments for himself. He began to, to uh, take the glory, he began to, to take uh, the glory of Israel and, and go to war on his own and do things on his own. And he began to turn his heart away from God. And David was after God's own heart. So how did David do that? Well, I love the prayer that David prayed. I, I love that he, he prayed this prayer often, and, and I, I repeat this prayer often. God, search me. Search me. Search me. God, search me. And the reason why I love that prayer is because God does not share our hearts. God will not share your heart. Saul repented of his sin. Go and read the passage. He said, you're right, Samuel, I'm wrong. I, I, you're right, I'm wrong. And, and so I, I, wanna, I wanna repent of that and will you come with me? And immediately began to make it about, can you, can you show me the ways and can you come with me so that Israel sees the prophet of God with me and knows that I'm still in charge? And Saul revealed what happens for many of us that we are, we're concerned about, hey, I want to get things together. I want to clean things up. I want to work hard at, at getting better in my life. I want to get some things worked out. I really would like some things to change in my life. But I'm still struggling with a heart full of something else. And, and you know, that's why scriptures talks about guarding your heart. He, guarding your heart. And the reason why it's so important to guard your heart, because if you let things in, if you let anger become bitterness, and, or if you let unforgiveness become bitterness and anger, and, and, and you become so consumed with something else in your heart that you miss God having your heart, and your heart is no longer after God, but after something else. See, God will not share space with something else in the seat of who you are. He wants to sit on the throne of your heart. And he does not share it. He does not share glory. He does not, uh, when we worship God, it is not about us, it's about God. Aren't you grateful for a worship team that's anointed? The reason why we can worship God is because they're worshiping God and they're not making it about them. They're making it about God. We worship you with our praise. Almighty God, we worship you. Holy God, it is about you. God will not share glory and he will not share your heart. So this is why it's so important to make sure whatever's in our heart, it, there's space for God. We create space, and in creating space for God, we allow room for the Spirit of God to come in and dwell and anoint us. So we need to prepare our hearts. Is there space in your heart for the anointing of God? <laughs> Search me, O oh God. David said, search me, O oh God. See if there is any wicked way, any pattern in my life, that Hebrew word, any pattern of anything that's coming into my heart. Search me, O oh God. See if there is anything. I know you won't share my heart. And so God, you have all of it. 
I have to get rid of my anger. I have to get rid of my jealousy. I have to get rid of anything, anything or anyone else who comes into my heart. I will guard it from that. I will repent of that. I will get rid of that. I will allow God to come in and fully. And God, you have my heart. When we sing that, when we pray that, we know we have space for him to do that. I love what John Piper said, God is most most glorified when we are most satisfied with him. When we are most, when, when something else can satisfy you, when something else can fill that space, there's not room. It's why, it's why the passage on dedic, baby dedication Sunday, it's the passage that Pastor Lisa read in Deuteronomy 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So love the Lord God, your God with all your what? Heart. With all your soul. With all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses, on your gates. I love this in our, for our kids growing up. In fact, to this day, every, just about every room you walk in in our house, there's scripture everywhere. <laughs> uh, uh, Sue has put scripture on everything. They're on mirrors. They're on uh, walls. They're, in, they're sometimes framed. They're sometimes uh, written. Uh, she has uh, the, the little window that looks out over the sink, you know, that you spend a lot of time at. Uh, and uh, there's always different cards there with different verses that are different passages uh, um, she's always texting our family and saying, here's scripture, here's why. Why? Because if we don't keep putting these things, these are the things we need to get into our hearts. David said, your word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. That I might not, God, don't let me put anything else in the place where only you should be. How do I do that? How do I have this anointing? Well, I need to prepare my heart, pursue God with everything that I am, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, with every passion that I have with my mind. I'm so grateful that David was a man after God's own heart, and you can be someone. You don't have to be qualified. You just have to be someone who's willing and surrendered and say, I give you my heart. I will pursue you with everything that I have, everything that I think, every th- being that, every strength that I have, God, I will pursue you. I will be after your heart. If we prepare, we can have this anointing. And then the second thing that happens in the passage is is David teaches us to receive the assignment of anointing. Let's look at verse 14. Now the Lord, the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul. And what happens when the spirit of the Lord is gone? When there's all this space in, their, in, in your heart, it's not good. Listen to what happens. And an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Now, I'm not going to get into all the theologies and discussion on that. It's a very interesting conversation. But Saul's attendants said to him, King, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. So the Lord commanded his servants, search for someone. And and, and they said, let the king, let the Lord command his servants to search for someone who can play the lyre. He will play when the evil spirit from God comes on you and you will feel better. Anybody ever felt better after worship? I mean, in the beginning of worship, you're like, man, I got all kinds of things on my head. I'm not sure. Uh, I got to figure out where I'm going to set my coffee. I don't want to spill it on the pews. There's enough stains already on them. I don't want to add to the collection. 
I, I, I got to figure out what, oh, there's not people coming in. Oh, oh, there's, oh, there's still family members. Where's that? Where is my child? They are late again. Um, where are they? Uh, and uh, you, you go through all of this and then suddenly music starts playing. And what happens? God uses music to start grabbing your attention, to start kind of getting away the distractions, right? And, and he uses it to, to bring our attention. And it does feel better, doesn't it? There's a reason for that. So he will play, the evil spirit from God comes on you and you'll feel better. So verse 17, so Saul said to his attendants, find someone who plays well and bring him to me. And so they went out and looked for God's anointed. No, they did not. They looked exactly the way everyone else looks. Send me your resume, look around, talk what, what's the word in town, you know? Who plays a really mean leer, you know? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Who can really shred it? Uh, we need the king help. So one of his servants said, I have been a son of Jesse of Bethlehem and who, I, who knows how to play. There is a man. He is brave. He's a warrior. He speaks well. He's a fine looking man. And the Lord is with him. Last tagline. And the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son David who is with the sheep. I've, I've interviewed a lot of people. I've been on a lot of interviews. And, uh, you know, there's always this aspect of your faith that ends up coming up or showing up, right? Uh, if you've ever been in those interviews, you know, of course, the job description Whatever the job description is, I'm going to try to prove that I'm the best person for that. And then, uh, you know, I, you, 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 who you are, they're looking to find out who you are, not just what you can do. And so they ask you all these probing questions, and you've learned how to answer them. And, uh, you know, and you always get to that awkward place, like, uh, where you don't know, is the person a Christian? Are you a Christian? Are they, you know, is it okay to say I'm, I, I'm a Christian or I'm not? Is it not okay? I don't know what kind of workplace environment this is right now. And you're kind of feeling that out. And uh, I, I remember uh, being on a, a job interview and someone asked me point blank and said, hey, are you a Christian? And I said, yes, I am. And he goes, all right, well, that's okay. That'll be all right. You know what's amazing? Is that the assignment comes to David, and they go and look for someone who can play well, who represents himself well, who would be a, a pleasure to bring into the presence of the king, and the tagline is, and the Lord was with him. Let me tell you, when you hire someone who is anointed, you have no idea what you're getting, but I can promise you their performance and what you love about them will not be what they do for the job. It will be the anointing, even if you don't even have an idea what it is. Because in the anointing of God, there is power from God. And your success, so to speak, isn't, won't be determined like, oh, okay, then you're going to be, oh, so successful. I mean, that can happen. I, certainly, that can be a part of your story and how God is blessing you and using the power of God. But let me tell you, who you are will be a blessing to every single person that knows you because you are anointed. See, it isn't just an assignment, it is a calling. It isn't just when you are anointed, your job doesn't become a job, it becomes a calling. Well, I'm grateful that our musicians are called to be here. I'm grateful, you know, I'm so, I'm so grateful that we have a, a, some, we normally have a full packed out youth section. I'm so grateful that, you know why I know it's, because it, I know our anointed youth are not just here, they're on the other side of the building with their anointing, bringing the power of God to our children and the next generation behind them. They're not gone from church, they're serving in church. So did you ever notice the ebb and flow of our youth section? It's not because they didn't show up or they're late, it's because they showed up early and they brought the anointing to their work. 
I, I had you, I had you enjoy some coffee this morning, maybe some refreshments outside. And, and there are people in this church, let me tell you, uh, uh, that, that have made this not just a job or an assignment, but because they're called and because they're anointed, it makes a difference in everything they do. I, I love that. I've watched uh, servants around this church for years in our youth ministry, in our kids ministry, in our, in our uh, hospitality ministry, in our, our greeting ministry, and uh, through our leadership teams, and through our missions teams, and through our outreach team, people who would say, I'm not here because I just want to see what it's all about. I'm bringing something, and when I show up, I'm anointed, and so my job becomes a calling. In everything. And here's what, what does David do um, with his anointing? Well, he just got anointed to be the next king. I wonder what's next for David. Verse 19. So, the Lord, so then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is where? Where is he? Isn't he king? He just got anointed by Samuel to be king of Israel. He is appointed. He's just a young man. He's just a boy. And, and now this calling, this, this anointing comes on his life. And what does he do? He goes back. See, it wasn't a bad thing for David to go back to the sheep. You know why? Because in the field is where he was speaking to God. He was spending more time with God. He was preparing his heart. He was getting ready for his assignment to receive his assignment. And his assignment didn't mean this huge change of scenery. His assignment was to go back and spend time with God. His assignment was already given. See, it isn't necessarily your job that's going to change. It's you that's going to change in your job. And when you bring, yes, that would be great, wouldn't it? If, if you showed up, but it wasn't you, like it was you, but it wasn't, like it was you, but mm, man, you don't even know what, you don't even know what's about to happen, because let me tell you, your presence brings the presence of God. And David didn't get that anointing or receive that calling because someone recognized it. If he did, then he would have left immediately and been like, okay, uh, thank God I don't have to go back to those fields anymore. Whew, I could really use a break from sitting in those fields looking after those dumb sheep. I'm so tired of that job. I can't wait for a new job. Have you ever been there? Can't wait for a new job. Can't wait for, I can't wait to get out of this. Can't wait. And God's saying, I can't wait for you to change in it. See, before you go to the next assignment, you got you to gotta receive your first assignment, which is to receive the anointing exactly where you are. If your power and your anointing completely depended on your time alone with God, I wonder how powerful it would be. Because David didn't mind going back to the fields. He didn't, mind, he didn't mind going back to the sheep. Man, God help me prepare for your anointing. Prepare my heart and receive the assignment of the anointing and see what it really is. And then finally, number three, to walk in the power of the anointing. So Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them with his son David to Saul. So David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul liked him very much. Something different about this kid. David became one of his armor bearers. Then Saul sent word to Jesse saying, Allow David to remain in my sermons for service, for I am pleased with him. And whenever the spirit from God came on Saul, David would take up his lyre and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better and the evil spirit would leave him. Here's the powerful thing about worship. 
when you're in the presence of worship that is about God, it isn't the beautiful music that's doing, making the difference. It's actually the power of God that's moving because he inhabits the praise of his people. You don't have to, to, to be a certain special someone to get the anointing. You have to be someone who's prepared your heart and said, I'm going to not, nothing else in my heart except what God puts there. I will search my heart, get rid of anything, and create space. I will receive the assignment of the anointing right now where I am. And now what it looks like to walk in the power of that anointing is that everywhere I go will be a walk of worship. In everything I do, do, uh, do it, whatever you do, Paul said, whatever you do, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. My life is the, my worship, not my songs, not, not just what I'm playing. David's presence wasn't about his presence. It was about the presence of God and God's will being able to do anything he wanted to do because he had a surrendered heart and a welcome place and space with someone who would receive the anointing in their assignment and someone who was willing to walk in that anointing. And when David shows up, so does the presence of God. <laughs> the difference between David and Saul is God's anointing coming. And I don't know what's different in you, but I want to ask you, are you anointed? And if you're not, whatever you need to do, I mean, why wouldn't you do it? To walk in the power of God? Are you tired of walking in your own strength, in your own power, in your own abilities? I want to offer you that opportunity. Invite our band and worship team to join me as we close our service. I want to ask you, this isn't about a sermon or about being able to deliver this in such a special way. It's a very simple truth in the story that any one of us now can receive the anointing of God. And oil still represents, in the New Testament, oil still represents the, the, the Holy Spirit, still represents his anointing. We still use it today. We still anoint people with oil. We still pray over them and, and ask for God's anointing. But our prayer isn't what necessarily anoints you. We're just believing that God will release a power in you, an anointing in you, because you have brought a heart that is open and doesn't have anything in the way. Some of us today need to come to the altar on our knees and get rid of all the clutter that's been in our heart and all the spaces that's been filled up with everything else, and there's no room for God's anointing. There's no room for God to fill it. And if that's you, I want you to do it. Do that today. Begin to clear house. Begin to, to sweep a clean house in, in your heart and say, God, search me. I'm coming to you. I'm putting everything else aside. I want to empty everything else. I only want to be filled with you. But if you're saying, I, I am walking in that, I just, I want God to release an anointing in me today. I want to invite you to stand with me. And I want to invite our response team, some of our spiritual leaders to come forward. There's anointing oil right here. There's anointing oil in both of these baskets. Come on, response team. Come on, stand everyone, please. And I just want to invite you. Maybe you need to, to spend some time with God at the altar today, making room in your heart. Maybe you need to come and say, I, I want to be anointed. I want God to, uh, I want God to, Anoint. I want him to release power in me. We have some folks here that were ready, are ready to anoint you. Some of our other response team, you guys can come on up if you want to, please. And you say, maybe I just need prayer. You can ask anything you, you want for prayer or anything that you need. I know this. 
it's less about anything that we're going to do and all about what God's going to do. And it's just a matter of are you willing for God to do that? Maybe you're someone who hasn't, you said, I've never, I've never, I don't know that I have God in my heart. I don't know that I've ever taken that step as someone to receive God into my heart. And if that's you, then then I wanna meet you right down here. I wanna meet you and pray a simple prayer with you to receive Jesus into your life and let him have rule in your heart right now. If you've never made that decision, it's the greatest decision you could ever make to say, I want to be a follower of Jesus. I want Jesus in my heart. And if that's you, I want to meet you right down here. Maybe you need to do something else with God and do some business on your knees right here before the Lord and make room in your heart. Maybe you're wanting the anointing of God to say today right now, would you just make this your prayer? God, we just receive what you have for us right now. As we worship you, God, may your presence be here and our hearts be yours in Jesus' name.